Um, Courtney, Joe, thanks for joining us on the Player Diary. Joe, last time you were on here, um, you were Danny Kerr, so this time I perfectly picked a, one of the tallest players for you to make it easier for our cameraman. First of all, what's been the schedule so far today? You had the gym first up, Courtney. Yeah, we had uh, we had a couple of meetings, about an hour's worth of meeting, and then um, came down and did our, our weights, our power stuff, and, and a bit of skills and things like that. So, yeah, that's that's the kind of morning. Then you go into training straight after that. So you're in the prone row. What are you doing with that, that thing? Um, I think it was 70 cakes, just power, and it, it reads just read your score. So it checks the speed of what you're doing, does it? Yeah, pretty much. I think the the force uh, that you're pulling it with, yeah. And then training, Joe, this afternoon. A bit nice to get a bit of sunshine. Yeah, straight into sort of a more a more team based. Obviously, getting close to the game now, so very much more team based. So sort of a, like a, a run through of our moves and patterns. So the forwards broke away and did some scrums and lineouts, and, and the backs sort of more shape and then we put it together and did more of a team session. Is it a focus session on a Thursday when that's what everyone knows their roles now and it's getting the detail right but so close to the game? Um, kind of, we still want a, a good bit of intensity because it's a couple of days from the game. Um, we don't really treat it like a team run, like extended team run kind of thing. We make sure we uh, get a good bit of work out of it as well. Afternoon off Courtney, what will you do this afternoon to relax when you're sort of 48 hours or so away from a game? I'll just chill out, uh, nice big bag to lay in with a nice Nice big TV as well, so yeah. Who are you rooming with? Who will be there disturbing you? Big Luther Burrell. Yeah, my boy. So nice. we should be taking it easy, watching some Dragon Ball Z. You think six starts in a row now together for England. Tell me a bit about your partnership and, and why you think it's working so well. Go on, launch. <laughs> mate. Uh, What's so good about Courtney? <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, a, it's obviously, a, you can't can't quite just put it down just to a second row partnership. It's a, it's a pack of a hole. But no, we're really enjoying playing sort of in, in the team and with Courtney. Obviously, Courtney running the line has been... Obviously, a big, big pressure off for me, so I've been able to just play my game, and, and now I'm really enjoying it. What can you say about Joe Launchbury? What about that tap tackle on last week against Ireland? Yeah, like, I mean, um, he's, a, he's a great player, isn't he? You are a great doing player. Right. <laughs> well done. Um, no, no. To be fair, I think we complement each other really well. Um, I think Launch is definitely more of a workhorse, but you know he can get around the park and do all that kind of thing as well. Where, yeah, I think we just we just complement each other really well. Talking of partnerships, Ed Slater told the Player Diary a couple of weeks ago when you and Burton that he'd pick you two as his centre backs in an RFU, well, an England football team, <laughs> in a rugby football team. You reckon he'd take that? He'd be a centre back in football? Yeah, definitely. I used to play centre back when I was. Uh, you, any, are you any good? Friend. I'm alright. I've got some skills, yeah, a little bit. And Jay? I was a keeper at school, so um, probably air more towards a keeper, but no, I'll be happy, happily filling at centre back, go out for corners and score a few goals. I'll be, I'll be happy for that. He also picked uh, the Vunapoda brothers as wing backs. What do you think about that? Not so sure about that. <laughs> Not so sure. Terrible that. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> terrible. Any other decent footballers then? Who else would be, you know, who would be in the midfield, who would be up front? Uh, you, your tens are usually pretty good footballers. Um, I know he's obviously not here, but Myla is, uh, is pretty good at football and I think DC as well is pretty good. So, yeah, we've got a couple of skilled, you know, rugby players are pretty athletic. We can, we can do all sports. <laughs> good for you for a big man. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Thanks a lot. All right, Cheers. sweet. Tom, you just completed the captain's run 24 hours ahead of the Wales game. What? It's a player-led session, is it? The coaches take a back seat. What sort of detail are you working on? Yeah, by this stage of the tournament, you know, we uh, we know the basics. Um, we've been together a little while now. The cohesion's there. It's just, um, you know, it's a chance to stretch your legs, um, feel fresh going into tomorrow's game and just iron out any of the final detail, just make sure everyone's got everything clear in their minds. And, uh, you know, then we can relax for the afternoon knowing we're in a good place. So not working too hard at all, you know, not getting a sweat on, it's just doing a few scrums, line-outs, those sorts of things? Um, yeah, we spot our line-outs, um, we do a bit of handling, just make sure we're sharp and, uh, you know, get out on the field, run through a few of our plays and just make sure uh, all of our timing's right, our little detail. You, you do get a little bit of a sweat on because, you know, you want to you wanna get into your stride and, and feel good. Um, you know, you, you wouldn't want to be sat in a hotel all day today. You know, you pick up that sort of hotel fatigue and, uh, and it's hard to get going again tomorrow. So it's a chance just to keep moving, stay on top of things. You speak well about the emotion of the game. What do England need to do in the next, or you as a team need to do in the next 24 hours to get that right for the game on Sunday? I think managing it is the main thing. You know, um, there's been a lot of hype. It's, uh, it's always a big game between England and Wales, but on the back of last year with a two-week build-up, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of hype, lots been talked about. So um, for us, it's about just staying composed now, um, staying calm making sure we do all the little details, uh, get our prep right, get our diet right, get our sleep patterns right, everything like that, and, uh, and just relax as best we can uh, bef before tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we know we'll be there um, right on the edge when it, when it comes to kick-off. What will you do, what do you normally do in the afternoon before a game? So what, what, do you always do the same thing or is it is something different? Uh, personally, no, I don't have a set routine. Um, you know, most of us uh, perhaps have a little go, go down the spa, have a stretch, a bit of mobility in the pool. Um, there's ice baths and things in the change rooms here for us now. Some people uh, really like that. Um, I'll probably get in for a few minutes, just kind of freshens you up. 
you go from one meal to the next. Uh, lots of snacks, about getting as many carbs and uh, as much fuel on board as you can uh, for the next 24 hours, really. Make sure you're fully loaded up, ready for the game. So many just find the intriguing subplots this game with the, the World Cup um, pool game, the fact that of what happened last year, the fact that not many in this side have beaten Wales before, obviously you're one of the three in the starting lineup. How do you make sure that you just keep focus on the, on the actual game itself in the 80 minutes? Yeah, it's exactly that. I mean, I think all the subplots are for the, the pundits and everybody else to talk about, really. The fans, uh, for us, it's, uh, it's another game of rugby. Um, you know, we treat every game the same. We, you know, we're desperate to compete as hard as we can for the England shirt and, uh, and win. And we never want to let ourselves down here at Twickenham in particular. So it's a massive occasion in its own right, regardless of the subplots, the, the competition, the World Cup or anything else. So um, you know, coming out here, you can see the white all around us at Twickenham. You know, there's already an atmosphere building. Boys feel it when we come into the stadium today, and uh, you know, we never want to let ourselves or our fans down here. So, you know, it's just fully focused on that, and you know, this this game in particular. Do you think the crowd will be important? It was important in Cardiff last year, wasn't it? So hopefully, it'll have the same effect here. Yeah, I mean, it'll be nice to play at Twickenham as opposed to Millennium Stadium. You know, there was a there was a real big atmosphere there last year, and uh, it's magnified by the this, this stadium. You know, the high walls, the roof on, everything else. So, um, you know, I think this was as good as we felt it last year, uh, last week at, uh, against Ireland. It was an um, incredible atmosphere here. The noise was another level on what I've experienced before. Perhaps that and the All Blacks game are two of the biggest games I've played in. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll have more of the same. I know the anticipation's there. So hopefully we deliver on the field, give them something to cheer about and, uh, and then get behind us. Thanks a lot, Tom, and good luck Sunday. No worries, thank you.